In this video, I'm going to show you live demo of how vector databases, vector searches work or semantic searches. They're kind of used simultaneously. So you can see exactly how data is stored in a vector database. And when you query or when you search for an item, how does these vector databases retrieve that information and pull out the most accurate information for you? So this is provided by Quadrant Vector Database. I'm going to go through these all of these so that way you can see exactly how amazing it is. And hopefully you'll get a really good understanding of how vector data databases work and how vector searches work. I was doing a deep dive series for my school about vector databases. So that's why I was when I found this, I was like, Oh, wow, this is amazing. So I wanted to make sure I shared it with you guys as well. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Zabair, my school community, my YouTube channel is all about building incredible AI agents that are useful. And for businesses for personal use cases, we have a great community where you can be connected to like minded individuals, all of the people that are there are there to learn and collaborate with each other. We have daily calls so that if you're, you're stuck for any tech support related stuff, you can jump in and ask your questions. And then obviously at any point you can uh, put your question and ask an assist channel, somebody or myself will be able to help you right away. And we also have obviously all of these different sections in the classroom that you can uh, utilize, especially the edit and templates for for tutorials that I've made previously, and also the future ones as well. So make sure you check it out. I'll put the link in the description. All right, let's get back to the demo uh, quadrant vector database, which we'll explore further um, in the upcoming videos. Um, is a great uh, open source vector database. They provide these great demos that you can actually try it out yourself. So if we click on this one, this will show you exactly in a two dimensional way. Again, this is a two dimensional representation of a multi dimensional database. I don't know if that made sense. Uh, but this will give you a good idea. So for example, let's say we're looking for smart TV. If I click on smart TV, as you can see right here on the dots here, smart TV, is close to the audio and video section. And then also it's close to portable equipment, right? It's close to music. So all of this is clustered in this area versus now if I were to look for example, for bread and butter, you'll see in the bottom, this will go to a different part of this vector database. If I click on this, there you go. Look, it's on a complete other side and all of the food items here are clustered together. So for example, kitchen appliances, right? Because bread and butter is going to be in the same area as kitchen or food. Um, here it's for example, close to, uh, let's see, bread and pastries, uh, milk and gastronomy. So you can see all of this non alcoholic beer and why the cluster here, it looks like it has all of the food items or the kitchen items or whatever it may be. So this is a good way for you to understand that whenever a person does a query or puts a search or looks for something, a vector database only searches in the area that's relevant, because it understands the meaning behind what the user is searching for not just matching the keywords, right. And that's where that huge difference is. So let's take a look at another example. For example, let's take a look at lipstick. And as you can see, it's all the way in this side and all of the clusters here are going to be similar to lipstick, right. So as you can see, it says beauty equipment, right, uh, health and beauty tactics, um, services and field of beauty. So all of this is closely in the same cluster. And therefore it did a much quicker job of retrieving the exact data that you were looking for with a way more accuracy compared to a traditional research where it would only match the keywords that the user is looking for. So that's the main difference uh, between vector databases and vector searches or semantic searches in this case. So for example, this one, the semantic search demo startup. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So let's say you are looking for a startup that offers uh, some particular service, right? So we'll take a look at the difference between the neural search, which is this vector search versus the text, which is going to be our regular way of searching that kind of matches the query to uh, the search term. So for example, let's say you're looking for uh, wooden furniture, right? So when you search for a wooden furniture in the vector database, it actually understands the meaning behind what you're looking for. And therefore, the search result is going to be way better compared to a traditional way of searching where it's going to only look for the queries or it's going to match the words inside of your query. So in the neural search or in the vector search, it actually first understands what the query is. 
and then and goes and retrieves the things that are similar to what you're looking for. So basically it understands what you're searching for before comparing the words or looking for the particular description of that business, right? So for, for this wooden furniture, so now you have all these different startups that are all about wooden furnitures, um, see designs of wood furnitures, wood tech um, specializing in manufacture of furniture for numerous industries, and even things that are providing interior and exterior furniture right here, right? So if you were to, if we were to do the same thing now with um, a regular search, see the results are not as good because it's, it's matching wooden furniture to the database and it's looking for words that are matching to that and therefore it will provide you all of these irrelevant results because again it's not understanding what you're searching for versus the neural one because that's where this huge difference is now and therefore you can see that it gives you way better search result versus your normal way of searching so we can take a look at the other demo here so this is the semantic search recommendation demo right based on whatever object or whatever image you click what this is going to do is it's going to recommend more op more things that are similar to your first selection and therefore it's going to refine that criteria so for example let's take a look at a burger for example right let's say this double whopper cheese mini if i click on like on this now it's going to refine the results again and recommend me things that are similar to this so it's not like just matching the keywords it's matching the style and even the look and feel of the exact Thing that you liked and in this particular case we clicked on this double whopper so therefore it's gonna provide you all of these different um, results that are similar to that so if we get rid of this maybe that wasn't the perfect one but let's take a look at something else right so let's take a look at for example um, Philadelphia roll of sushi so if we click on like now it's going to pull up all of the different images that are not only of sushi but also look similar to this image meaning the way it is put together uh, kind of the number of different sushi so as you can see it's very close to this exact image that we liked and that's where what i was talking about earlier as far as a vector database understanding the meaning behind what you're looking for this is exactly what i'm talking about it's not just searching for a keyword it's searching for oh okay so this initial image that this user liked i see that it has eight sushi rolls here it uh, looks and it has the color of orange meaning it probably has salmon and therefore i'm gonna retrieve all of the results or all of um, the data that's inside the vector database that looks as close to this as possible. So that's where the difference comes in. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of how this search works. Please make sure you take a look at these demos. These are fantastic. I'm going to put the link, this link in the uh, description here and the bottom of this section so that way you can go ahead and play around yourself because that will give you a really good understanding when you uh, work with these demos.